Construction Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. As another sidebar, let's talk a little bit about sessions as well. There are sessions in Azure, as you might find in ASP.NET. For example, we could run this little piece of code inside of any one of our roles. Session, set the current student to some particular value. Or session, get the current student out of the session object. However, sessions are not sticky by default in Azure. If you have multiple instances, as in the case when we're talking about these input endpoints for worker roles, if you have multiple input endpoints, each instance essentially has its own session. Therefore, when users come in and make a request, in this case of our worker role, they could be round robin to each instance by the load balancer. Therefore, the information that we find inside a session may not be there because it was for a different role, for a different endpoint. To kind of give us a visualization of this, if I have a request coming in from outside, it hits load balancer, and in this particular case dealing with web roles versus worker roles, request one might go to web role one, and thereby establishing something in session. But the very next request by that same user might get load balanced to the second web role. And thereby, we've lost, or at least apparently lost, what might be in session. In fact, we didn't lose it. It's just that the session is not available across all instances of our role. Hmm. So what to do in this particular case? Well, when you have a need for sticky sessions, in other words, where you have a need to share information across the instances of a role that are behind a load balancer, again, whether they be web, or in the case we're looking at here, the input endpoints, then you need to either A, roll your own sticky sessions, essentially have some sort of communication set up amongst roles to get session data. Of course, this is pretty hard and error prone type of code that you might cost, uh, incur. So the other uh, option, one that's probably favorable, is to use table storage. And if you take a look at the Azure in Action book, or if you take a look out on the web for sticky sessions inside of Azure, you'll see some examples about how to have storage of session information made persistent through table storage, and how all roles can then access session, session information through a single table storage setup. Okay, back to configuring those, in point, those input and internal endpoints for our worker roles. Inside of the configuration, in this case configuration GUI as opposed to the actual XML, we'll find an endpoint tab for our worker roles. And on the endpoint tab for our worker roles, in giving your worker endpoints a name, you can also establish the type, be them input or internal, and the protocol use, again, TCP, HTTP, or HTTPS. In the case of an externally facing endpoint, in other words, what we call an input endpoint, you also establish a port. Obviously, that's not needed for the internal endpoints. That same information can also be seen again or actually managed by the XML. Okay, how do we use those endpoints we've just established in configuration? Well, it's pretty much just like we would set up a normal WCF service. Create your service, define your address at runtime, and then select from those instance endpoint collection. Let's take a look at some code to do that. In particular, let's take a look at how we would use that with an input endpoint. Again, create our service, set up our TCP binding with appropriate security, then define through role environment which instance endpoint we'd like to use. Then on our service, conduct the ABCs of WCF, and that is define our endpoint providing a contract, binding, and address. This next couple of lines of code here all go to provide a max, the metadata exchange for potential WCF types of clients. This is optional, but it's pretty typical when using WCF services. And lastly, we open up our service host. How does that change when we do an internal endpoint? Again, one that is not exposed outside. Well, the code is almost identical. The only real difference here is in setting up the internal endpoint 
versus the input endpoint when addressing and adding up our service on the service host. Don't forget, on internal endpoints, again, those that are not publicly exposed, there is no load balancer. So if you have more than one instance of that worker role as an internal endpoint, you'll need to essentially roll your own type of load balancing. For example, setting up some sort of for loop to send messages off to each instance of that particular worker role. Be careful, make sure that you're checking so that you're not sending, if you are the worker role, you're not sending the message back to yourself, creating some sort of infinite loop. Well, what else can we do with Azure? Well, you can put PHP applications in Azure. You can work with threads in your web and worker role. And you can request use of external processes or native libraries to your web and worker roles. As far as PHP or things like Python, essentially fast CGI types of applications concerned, just make your executable part of your project and essentially expose your PHP application as a web role in Azure. You can work with background threads, again, in your worker and web roles. Just create and work with threads just as you would in a normal server environment. Consider using the parallel extensions for .NET to do so. If you want to call on an external process, say some sort of EXE that's made available to your application, just use the process class, set up parameters, start work with, and wait for exit, just like you would in any kind of .NET application, and as shown here on this piece of code. And lastly, you can call on native libraries using good old-fashioned system runtime interoper services. Well, that concludes our chapter on worker roles. We encourage you at this point to go out and take a look at the Windows Azure Role Communication Lab, allowing you to take a look at how to set up input and internal endpoints. In other words, direct communication with worker roles. This lab is going to take a fair amount of time, about 60 minutes, and it does require a relatively deep knowledge, or at least enough knowledge, WCF, to be able to really fully appreciate the lab. You'll find the lab in the Windows Azure Platform Kit under the Labs folder under Windows Azure Role Communication. Again, don't forget, when you start Visual Studio, run as administrator, and if you're using Visual Studio 2010, make sure you bring in the application with .NET 3.5, not .NET 4. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Thank you.